Hello and welcome to Eye on the Money, the television show that gives you insights into how to improve your financial well-being as well as make your money work for you. I'm Ingrid Nantege. Now remember our collaboration with Centonomy is still ongoing and you can catch all the episodes you've missed over the past couple of weeks on YouTube. Today on the show we discuss the role of charmers and investment groups in achieving good personal finance. Investment groups or charmers are created to empower individuals and improve their livelihoods. Many charmers always visualize being the next big thing. However, according to a, rep a report by Financial Sector Deepen in Kenya, either most charmers collapse within two years or the members become disgruntled because their goals are not being met. Today on the show, we discuss the best way to make use of charmers to meet your investment goals. Joining me in studio is none other than Maxwell Gichuhi, a trainer at Centonomy. You're very welcome to the show, Maxwell. Thank you very much, Ingrid. I'm glad to be here. Absolutely. And particularly to talk about a topic, chamas, which often we hear a lot of Kenyans talk about, oh, I belong to a chama. Just give me a few weeks. I'll be able to pay you because it's my position in the chama. I'll yes. be getting my money. But I'm so happy to be sitting here today with the experts to help us demystify everything we need to know about this. But before we even get into the beef of the conversation, we'd like to take um, a look at the streets of Nairobi just to get the view of the common man on what exactly they know on the topic. So let's take a quick look. Uh, Achama is a small organization that people come together, especially for our financial togetherness or our financial welfare or our financial target. Nile kushikana kwa wamama na kutoa na kutoa kitu kidogo mkishikanisha mkua mume mungana mkua wamama wengi muna shikanisha pesa enyu muna muna saidia na nayo. Achama ni ile kikundi watu wana kutana alafu wana join hands kuchanga pesa ili wasaidie siku za baadaye chama za financial kind of uh, groups ni mahari watu wamekutana kwa nia fulani ya kujiendelesha wa mama kukutana pamoja uh, mnakaa mnaelewana alafu muna mnapanga ile kitu mu, ile project mtakuwa nayo and after that, diyo munaamua kama ni pesa, mutakuwa mkitua pamoja, munapeleka kwa bank, ama munakuwa na table banking, munazichukua hizo pesa, munagawana, kila mtu anaenda kwa biashara yake. I haven't joined and I do not think I will join because according to how I see it, it's like a saving plan. For me, majorly, I think about investing and multiplying money. So that might not be the best place to keep my money or to keep giving a treasurer you know, every month for a certain period of time because it really will not give me a lot of interest at the end of the day. I get to join the club and I get to give you a loan. 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 Inanisaidia kwa vitu mingi. Unaweza chukua loan kutoka kwa hiyo chama. Nimejaribu kujoin chama, lakini as we speak right now, si yuko kwa chama yoyote. Reasons being, uh, sometimes uh, akuna time ya kuenda kwa hizo meetings. Na kwanga busy, so it's really hard for me to get even time for, for going for those chamas. So what I've opted to do is go uh, join joining a circle. So I'm a member of a circle. So that's how I fundraise and that's how I save my money. Oh, niko kwa chama la ju nilikuwa natakanga ku save ndio ndio nisomeshe mtoto. Naweza kwenda hapo school fees na kopa. Na pia narudisha na pia napata dividend. Being a Muslim with uh, I profess Islam and uh, with a very strong Islamic faith. We, we are regulated, we are regulated by our religion uh, when or uh, when you undertake in a, in a, in a financial uh, undertaking, be it in a bank, be it in, a fi in other financial institution, uh, even in chamas. I don't know how they, 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 they operate, but here in the simple terms is... Uh, if you engage yourself, we are prohibited to engage in financial institutions which pay dividends and where you take money, you pay interest because interest in Islam is haram. 
And when you get dividend, it's also haram because it's a form of interest. That is the simple reason why I have not joined them. I wouldn't trust Chama with my money. When this is an organization of just people, maybe neighbors, a church, a committee, they are not financially, uh, let me say, literate uh, to that extent. They do not know how to multiply money. It's just like a store. And you know what happens in a store? It only goes stale. That's what I think. Yeah. I trust because I have to to the bank. Na una muna patua receipts, na munaona receipts every time. Pesa kipele kwa muna muna patua iso receipts, na munaona kweli yo pesa iko bado. You can trust them if uh, it's constituted of people that you know, you can trust them. But if it's a chama of people you've met like uh, randomly, people maybe you've moved to a new town and you don't really know those people, it will be so hard to to trust them. Nda trust sana ju tuko wa mama tunajuana tunakutananga tunafanya meetings every after 3 months. Lazima nita trust sababu pia ningetaka wakati niko na shida pia wananikujia. Wanakuja wakati niko na shida. So Maxwell, yeah. you've had the people's thoughts. Yes. But now again like I said as the experts if you're, help, if you're to help us understand and demystify this concept of chamas and investment groups, what would you say about that? Are they one and the same thing? What would you say about chamas and investment groups? Fantastic. Let me begin by defining what commonly is known as chama, right? Chama is when two, three people come together for a common objective. Now, in our case, mostly it's in regards to financial uh, growth. We want financial growth. We want financial freedom. We basically are looking for financial benefits. So it's synonymous when we say chama and an investment group because it means less, more or less the same. All right? Now, we have chamas who come together for the purpose of welfare. Mm -hmm. right? uh, maybe my mom is in several where you know, they have, their children are all grown up. They're doing their own things. They are looking for this social friendship, calamari. So they form a chama so that when Maxwell is blessed with a son, they will go and visit Maxwell. Uh, Maxwell is having a wedding. They will come with their group, you know, sing, you know, just enjoy. Right. So that's on a social. That's a, a social objective. But mostly, chamas will come together because they want to come to the same table and they have a common objective, which is financial. We want to invest and create flats so that when we retire, or I can choose to retire early and I have some income coming in even though I'm not working. So for the benefit of what we do at Centonomy, that is really what we are about. Brilliant. So basically, my understanding is the chamas that can be set aside for welfare, just to manage your expenses, you know, just to make sure you have that money that's coming in. And then there's also some that have to have an investment goal. Absolutely. So which brings me to my next question yes. of the process of forming these chamas, or I could even say joining. Mm -hmm. So me as Ingrid, I'm interested in joining a chama. How do I go about this? Because I know there are so many out there. Do why just randomly just look through, see which chama has the most membership? Can I form my own chama? Do how do I get into this? Do I go in specifically knowing oh, I'm going in this for welfare? Do I, like how does that look like? That's an intriguing question, Ingrid. Because number one, there are chamas that I know that have come through the clinic, and they started that you know you've met after 20 years after high school, you've met your friends, you've been doing yama every once Friday or one Saturday every month. Then two, three months later, we decide we've been spending 15000 per person. Why can't we decide that, you know, we can keep aside the 5000 and do a chama? And that's how they form. So they didn't have a common goal. There was no clear objective. But three years later, we have this money in the account. So what do we do now? So some chamas start specifically because people have an idea. They have a clear focus and objective on what they want to do. But others start by accident. For me, how you begin doesn't really matter. It is when we get awareness, and here is where we are today, and we decide, can we refocus? Can we have a clear objective? Can we lay down a plan, a strategy? I don't like using the big words because we scare people. A strategy is simply a plan of, we want to get here in the next three to five years. Here is where we are. How do we get from point A to point B? Mm -hmm. right. 
Now, again, Maxwell, for purposes of clarity, and because you've particularly mentioned, it doesn't really matter how you start. Absolutely. Because you could get into a chama, and it ends up really, really working for you. And oh, when yes. you look back, it's such a great decision. Yes. But um, still to understand, if I'm in the position whereby, really me, my goal is I want to own land, yes. right? Like, I'm really, really... In my head, I know exactly what it is that I like. I've been advised there's this chama that's existent. They're also into investments. So I'm really, really sold and it looks good. However, when I get in, maybe we are not quite on the same page in terms of the goal, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And then they're looking for maybe something else that's not a goal. Would you advise that? But like I said, it's a working chama. It makes sense. And maybe may, next year that goal could be buying land. Would you advise that I stick it out? Or should I find a chama that really fits into my needs? Does that make sense? It does make sense. Right. And I want to say something, Ingrid, about chamas. Mm. For anyone who's in a chama, if that chama is not doing what you can't do on your own, then there is no need for it. Right. Okay? We go to a chama. I won't join a chama Ingrid because mm -hmm. I want to buy quarter an acre. Mm -hmm. Because I bought quarter an acre. Right. I want to get into a chama where we can we're saying we can get twenty acres and if we split max we can get five. So a chama must draw you out. A chama must bring for do for you more than you can do on your own. Mm -hmm. Now that having been said, maybe you're looking at the criteria. Why should I join this chama? There are three pillars we talk about at Centonomy. The first one is consistency. Mm -hmm. A chama needs odds to be consistent. A chama must be consistent for it to thrive and grow. The second one is committed. Are the members committed? Rarely, Ingrid, will chama uh, collapse or cease to exist because people are, didn't have money. Mm -hmm. Most of the challenges are non-tangibles. Maybe members were not commitment, committed. So commitment is key. Then, of course, cohesion. And uh, we use a tool on personality so that you can understand yourself mm -hmm. and understand your neighbor. So that when we come to talk about investment, mm -hmm. I know Ingrid loves risks. Right. Maxwell is averse to risk. So can we come somewhere in the middle and agree? So in your case, I would say look for a chama that has the same objective, mm -hmm. getting into real estate. Maybe they will push you more. Maybe they just don't want to buy land. They want to buy land and construct. So that would be a good chama. Mm -hmm. Now look at the ability. Am I able to contribute? And of course, I'm hoping it will cost you some more. Because if there is no skin in the game, then again, that chama will not survive for long. Mm -hmm. We have to give something that costs us. And that's something we always say. If you're giving and your giving doesn't cost you, then it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Because you won't remember. Sometimes you go through the statements and you're wondering, where is this 8,000 going to? And then I remember, oh, right. I'm in a chama. It needs to be something that you're conscious about every time that money leaves your account. You know, men, it better work. Mm. Yeah. Now, Maxwell, even as we broke down the examples of chamas into, you know, one that you can focus on for investments and one for welfare, I would like to ask a question in line with that because one of the fundamentals of good personal finance is saving absolutely well. and i've had of situations where people join chamas like i could say maybe this is on the welfare side yeah. where you know um at, at, when it gets to your position then the team gives you a certain amount of money mm -hmm. gets to your position a team wrong. gives you a certain amount of money mm -hmm. so how you use that money is really up to you however i've also seen a situation in ch in chamas where people will say no it's okay you skip my number i'll wait for the next thing so the question is can chamas also be used as an avenue for savings? And if that's possible, how is that? Like, how can that be done? Absolutely, Ingrid. When we talk about savings, and uh, we usually talk about paying yourself first, most people have the knowledge. But it's a tool, the process, or the path to use so that we can be consistent in that saving. So in the light of that, a chama is a very good place to save. For instance, I'm in one chama where all of us are businessmen. Right? So we said we don't have this retirement plan, we better come up with something for ourselves. So that forces us to contribute every month, right? so that at the end of this period, we will have invested in these assets right. that will generate this income. Right. This becomes our retirement plan. Right. So yes, in the light of that, a chama can be your key to saving and being consistent. Right. Because remember, people know how to save. But the challenge is we want to spend and then save. Right. But the chama forces you to save first and then spend. Mm -hmm. So it can be used as an avenue for saving. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about merry-go-round. Sometimes maybe I want to do an right. investment. We've bought property. I know a chama of women who did that. They first went round, bought everyone a piece of property. 
then merged with some organization that helped them, then they built a house for each person. So yes, we can use it as an investment of not only saving, but, uh, sorry, as a path, not only for saving, but also for investing for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And Maxwell, even as we're here sitting um, down talking about all the good things about Chamas, what they can help you achieve in terms of your go investment goals, how can they can help you pretty much manage your money well. We've also had a good number of horror stories from people who've joined Chamas, and I'm sure you've heard of this <laughs> as someone who deals directly. So even as, again, I said, you sit here and encourage me, yeah. before I, as Ingrid, decide to go and join a Chama, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that I need to consider so that at the end of the day, I don't come back and I say, uh -uh, Maxwell, you <laughs> set me up. I ended awesome. up losing all my money. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm also a victim. Okay, and I'll one, let you hear the story. <laughs> and one of the questions we always do when you're doing a Chamas clinic at Centronomy is to ask, do Chamas work? Because of course some Chamas have failed. Right. But Ingrid, yeah. the world is about white and black keys. So we'll always have white keys and black keys and that's how we make music. I consider, I never consider failure as failure but a lesson. Mm. In one of the Chamas that I was in, we had contributed very well. Now the person who was keeping the records, one day just woke up and told us, Guys, you know what? My laptop got stolen. Okay, fantastic. Then we said, okay, <laughs> but you know we can track our records. Right. Then the second mistake we did is we never opened an account for the group. This same person was the same person who was trading our money in whichever portfolio we put under his name. Now he couldn't differentiate what his money was. Oh my so the third thing that automatically happens is guys lost, lost momentum. And morale and this was a very committed group these guys were always committed consistent and after that the charmer died mm. right so i'm laughing because those things happen yeah. but like you said with the hindsight and with this knowledge when we come together and because you had asked that earlier if we are coming together what should we look out for mm. because most of the times we want to form char i want to form a charmer with ingrid He's, she's my friend right you know but a charmer an investment group must be treated as a business even when we formed a group with cousins, mm. when it comes to the business of a chama, we have to treat it as a business. Mm. If we are meeting, let's look for a formal place to meet. We don't want to meet in your housing grid and then just start enjoying and partying. Right. Then we forget the business of a day. The secretary forgot the notes. The accountant didn't put down, the treasurer didn't put down the records. Then again, we'll have the scenario like the one I'm talking about. So the first thing is we have to look for people we are of the same mind in terms of this is the objective. We might not be very refined mm. in the same objective, but we're headed towards the same direction. Number two, we must treat this group as a business. Mm. The way I would come to Metropole and treat my work as Metropole, right. we have to do that. Then number three, members have to commit to the group and commit to themselves in obeying or working with the constitution. And we'll talk about the constitution. Mm. That's mm. the most important. Right. So where, if I'm joining in, I need to see do you guys have a constitution. Mm. Of course, like every other business, if you've been in existence for more than three to five years, then you're a stable charmer. But can I see the records? Can I see the minutes of your past meetings? Then that helps you to inform what kind of a group uh, a people you're joining. Mm. That will help you make a better decision. Mm. Yes. So now that we know what to look out for yeah. in order to just make sure we make the right decision, I'd also like you to tell us what some of the red flags are. And this is because, <laughs> like you've said, you've fallen victim and they've been so... I mean, it's been in the press uh, over and over again, people mm -hmm. complaining about, you know, my chama, I lost my money. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the most outstanding red flags that if someone notices before joining a chama, that's an absolute no? Fantastic. Number one, do these guys have a registered, are they using a registered vessel? Either registered as a limited company, a CBO, whatever form of registration, because that depends on the group. Number two, is the account under that registered entity? If that account is under a person, then that's a red flag. That's a no-no, all right? Number three, is there a working constitution? And have they been following that constitution or the chairman operates at the whims of the chairman? Right. All right. Number four, how is the leadership of the group informed or how is it installed mm. or how are they elected? We need to find out that. And I, and, I, and I can talk in broad terms, even for other groups in the country. 
when you go to a, corpora a, a cooperative or a circle and the 10 official members are related, right. then that's a red flag. Mm -hmm. That's a red flag. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a very quick break at this point, Maxwell, but we're going to carry on this conversation. And I'd like to talk a little more about the Constitution Absolutely. when we come back from the break. But remember, if you're our audience back home, you can be a part of this conversation by sending your feedback and queries to our social media handles at Metropole TV KE on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll be right back.